pick up a phone and dial them directly. 505-448-8888. That's 505-448-8888 or welcomehomeabq.com. That's welcomehomeabq.com. They're the best in the business. Glad to have him and uh, uh, well, I should ha- happy to have both of them here on this uh, great radio station. We are on our eight plus years. I need to go back to look at the sheet to give exactly your anniversary, but uh, it has been good because people have been getting good real estate information. There were some tenuous times uh, to be sure, guys, uh, but we've made it through the last year into what has unloaded into the biggest real estate year on record. Without a doubt. No doubt about it. And Eddie, I think we're at show 380, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, that's great. That's good. Uh, I feel like we're we're almost family, Tigo and Tracy. Well, we, we are. We the, are. The we Statomatic are. would know that, right? Of course I would. <laughs> what show there it is. Go. Yeah. Uh, of course, that's Tracy. She's in her camo today, which is pretty cool. I love that. Uh, by the way, Albuquerque hits multiple milestones for housing in June. We'll talk a little bit about that. Housing store in the Atlantic causing a stir. Uh, we'll also talk about the company uh, you may have heard of called BlackRock. Is relief on the way for frustrated, disenchanted home buyers? We'll figure out the answer to that question. The nation's housing shortage is real. Pay attention. The experts will tell you why. And how a new study from the National Association for Realtors, and that's the way you say it, Realtors, and builder and building costs have actually skyrocketed. But there's been a couple of elements where they've come down. Tigo and Tracy will pave the way for us. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Tigo, Tracy, take it away. Thanks, Thanks. Eddie. Thanks. Here we are. Here we are. Show 380, right? Yeah. When you think about 52 weeks a year, you know, we haven't missed many weeks. I got to tell you, I have to correct myself because you know how I am about getting the facts right. The facts right, right. yeah. Is, it's actually 371. Oh, not wow. Not 380. You were way off. I was 371. way off. I know, I know. A lot of shows, a lot of information, a lot of fun yep. we have doing yep. the show, right? And getting ready yep. for the show and making sure that we have stats and good information for our listeners. Um, if you want to talk to us, give us a ring, 448-8888. Happy to. We have a whole team of folks that help cover that phone for us. Yep. Um, if you're thinking about uh, selling, give us a ring, 448-8888. You know, Tigo, I've talked to quite a few people in the last couple weeks, and um, they're recognizing that they have options, right? When it comes to selling, there's ways to get a house that they want and sell at the same time. Buying and selling at the same time can be tough, especially when houses are not in huge supply. Right, yeah, we have such a limited number of homes on the market, so it does make it tough for folks that say, okay, well, I, you know, it's time. I want to sell my home. Market prices were top top the market price-wise, highest prices we've ever seen in the Albuquerque area for homes. And then they go, well, shoot, where am I going to move? Right, and, and we have options for yeah. that. So happy to talk to you about it and the different things and the different strategies we can help with to help make that move a reality and um, not as stressful as it might be. So Tracy, real quick, just pulse of the market in Albuquerque this week. We're on uh, we're on July 10th. It's really hot out there this weekend, July 10th, 2021. And it's still pretty frantic out there in the real estate market. Is that a fair word? You know, Tigo, I, I didn't think we were going to talk about this, but let me tell you about Wednesday okay. this week, right? Okay. So we had, well, Wednesday and Thursday, we had four open houses midweek for homes that had just gone on the market with us. Yep. Um, one, two, three of them were in the Northeast Heights, and one was in far northwest Rio Rancho mm-hmm. on Thursday from four to six. Okay. And... The Wednesday, uh, three open houses, uh, I was at one of them and other agents from the team were at others. Um, The house I was at had over 100 visitors. Now, individual groups, sometimes it was one person, three people, four people. Sometimes they're with their realtors, yeah. With their realtors, some without. Some have realtors, but were on their own, whatever. Just coming to see the open house. well, wow. and it was the first time, in, and we've been doing this, right? That's it's, It was the grand open house. It was the grand open first house. First time so anybody f- could see it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we had over 60 individual, not individual, 60 groups of people through. I mean, right. it was well over 100 people at the house that I was at. Okay. Um, the house Jane was at, same thing, over mm-hmm. uh, well over 100 people through that open house. Yeah. Uh, Corey held a house open on St., Yep. Um, she's the one who started this conversation among our team. And she's like, we had over 100 people there. I'm sure of it. 
So her seller went to the ring doorbell and literally counted all of the people. And they, the seller says they had 500 people through their house that day. Corey said it was crazy. And luckily, one of our title reps um, stopped by to give her some bottles of water to hand out. And he stayed so she wasn't there alone. But even the one in Northern Meadows, which is far northwest Rio Rancho, you have yep. to want to go there. You don't run into those signs, right? Well, and that one, the reason that one was in such high demand is it was it was a lower price point, definitely below the median. You know, our median is now up over $250,000. So, so in any event, yeah. she was exceptionally well attended as well. So what, what does that mean? We still have a lot of buyers in the market, a lot of people looking for the right house. Yep. Um, and you know, it's uh, interest rates are low. There's a lot of reasons. We talked about them last week. So what week. you're saying is demand has not dropped off. I would say in our market, based on this week yeah. and the number of showings we're having on houses we've listed, demand has not dropped. And, and the reason I say it that way, I've seen a lot of national stories lately where they're talking about, oh, it's starting to slow down, or the you know number of homes in the market is starting to grow substantially, stuff like that. We're we're seeing a little bit of increase in the number of homes in the market, but it's still nothing significant. So, Tico, last we talked, I think maybe there were around 900 houses on yeah. the market in yeah. our MLS. Where are we at right now? We're, as of today, just over a thousand, and that's in Metro Albuquerque. That's not the entire MLS because right. you know I don't want to look at Grants and Santa Fe and some of those other markets. So you know, just Metro Albuquerque, it's about it's just over a thousand homes. And to give you an example, you know, earlier in the week, I think it was Wednesday when I looked, it was about 900. So it, it ebbs and flows every week. You know, number of homes okay. coming on, number of homes going off. But we haven't been over a thousand for a long no, time. No, no, we we really haven't, and that that is kind of you know a, a milestone. The thing that's curious about that, and I'll be curious to see here in the next few weeks to a month, what happens. It's very common that this time of year is when we peak in the number of homes for sale in the Albuquerque area. And starting, you know, August, September, it starts to drop off all the way through till usually February. That's normal seasonal trend. So what we know, this date opened up this month, yep. July, just a week or so ago, right? Yep. Just over a week ago. And the last year, COVID, right? We yep. had this huge drop off of people putting their homes on the market. So this August, September won't be the norm compared. Right. I mean, the August and September from last year won't have been the norm statistics, but we have 30 years of data, right? right. So generally we see things start to pull back a little bit, but we don't expect that to happen this year. Well, I mean, with the state opening up and people feeling like they can get their house on the market and have it shown and yeah, I think I think the takeaway, Tracy, is that yeah, okay, we're going to get a little variable. We might get a little increase in the number of homes in the market. The thing is, this is still a very very strong seller's market, right? And it kind of doesn't matter what price range you're in. You know, there's always going to be those anomalies where you know there's just something about the home that makes it difficult to sell. But for the most part, everything is selling if it's in the right price range. Right, for the condition and location. Yeah, and that's why I keep saying, I'm gonna say it again, we could have 4,000, 5,000 homes on the market in the greater Albuquerque area tomorrow and still be in a balanced market and not, not in, a, not in a, a buyer's market. So one of the things that you talked about at our team meeting was home builders and how many houses they could build uh, a year and still not be caught up to the demand nationally. Yeah. That yeah. was a national number. That was a na so, so let me just back up a little bit. The National Association of Realtors did a, a recent study, and let me pull it up here. I wasn't ready for you, Tracy. Sorry, yeah. I just I think it's really interesting. Uh, oh, oh it's, it's it really t tells the story of our housing market, and we're going to get to the story in the Atlantic here in a minute too. Just we'll skim on it because. We, we don't want to get too crazy politically. And it's the Atlantic, too. I know listeners of Kiva probably go, in the Atlantic? You believe anything from the Atlantic? But actually, they, they really uh, hit some really good points about the housing shortage nationally. But what happened was um, National Association of Realtors uh, 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 brought in a consulting group to do a study of, you know, what's going on in the United States with housing. And what they found... And it was actually not too difficult to figure out was, 
you have so many uh, what they call household formations, right? Basically people that are starting a house, that are buying a house, and, and the number of, of houses needed um, is, is one number. Your next number is how many homes were actually built, right? And what they've calculated is that, I, I forget the time frame, I think it was 10 years, that the United States overall, the nationwide, we are, a, not, excuse me, there's no time frame involved with this, I'm sorry. We are somewhere between four and a half and five million homes short of what we could use for the demand that's out there. And then what they said was, if, if we were as a country in the entire country to build two million homes a year, it would take, what was the stat? 10 years? 10 years. 10 years to get back to you know, what the demand is calling for. So and we haven't had two, th- 2 million homes built a year in a very long time or? No, since 2004. Since 2004. Which so, was the peak of the building years. Right. And yeah. so two, th- 2 million a year would take 10 years to get caught up with the shortage of the homes on the market. And this year, I think they're talking maybe we'll have a million nationwide. I believe that was the number, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah. And so to, to, to bring that back down to local, yes, I know these are all national stats and national data. The, the thing is, we're seeing the exact same things here in Albuquerque. We know that there's way more supply than there, or excuse me, way more demand than there are buyers. We know that then the, there are for sale. Then there are for sale. What, man, I'm just saying that all wrong. Talking fast. I know. And and we know, you know, based on talking to builders and developers, that they're just not able to to bring product online as fast as the, the demand calls for. Right. But what we do know, too, is there are a lot of new neighborhoods. That's true. We have a lot of new homes available right now and coming and a lot of new neighborhoods that they have now got ready they they're ready to start building and it's in all areas of town right we know that they're still building by the base uh you know at the end of Wantabo by the kirtland air force base and what's the new one rio rancho coming soon los diamantes that's coming yeah that's coming soon Um, yep yeah no there's a lot in the pipeline and there's definitely new construction i i will say and I, i i mean this isn't anything about the builders it's just people are going to have sticker shock on on what things are because i I just saw a study the other day where they looked at uh, building costs in the last year about 22 percent increase in just the cost of materials to build a new home right and you know we've talked about it on the show the cost of materials that jumped way up especially lumber yeah. stucco concrete whatever well but, everybody talks about lumber because that's that's the obvious well, that's one. the commodity yeah. that you know goes on the commodities exchange that they can really track what really well here you go tracy here's okay since wow, we're on, you have a chart I, i've Look. got a, i've got a stat for that i didn't even know that i know so okay so we were talking about lumber right lumber 115 percent. everybody kind of knows that story Jumped but up. everything steel aluminum up 27 percent. windows doors up 13 percent. flooring up eight percent appliances up eight percent concrete up ten percent Brick stucco up 11%. Drywall up 14%. I've heard that one. Drywall really went Framing up. block up 36%. 36%. So, you know, anything that's concrete, stucco, that stuff's gone up quite a bit. Of course, anything that's wood-based has gone up a bit. This and, is a year-over-year c- right. material and labor cost. Yeah. So we know labor has also gone up. Yeah. So th- th- just to bring that back to the, the, the positive is there are a lot of new home construction options out there for folks right now. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they're, it's just the, the prices are higher. That's just the way it is. Right. I mean, the good news is, you know, you're getting new. Your yep. uh, repair costs over the next 10, 15 years should be yep. very low. Yep. You're getting energy efficient. I don't know that any of those new home builders aren't building more energy efficient, green belt, whatever than they were 10 years ago or whatever. I think most of them are doing a very efficient, you know, um, so that the utilities are less, the home can be more comfortable than maybe it is now. Yeah, so so I, I think the, just to kind of bring this back, I mean, well, I wanna to try to tie this together, this whole story about the, the lack of supply, costs have gone up substantially, Right, not not on just you know resales have gone up. We're tracking somewhere around 
you know, 12 to 15 percent here in Albuquerque year over year. Um, new construction has gone up even more than that. Interest rates are still down at 3 percent. Um, but this lack of supply nationally and, and here locally as well, it doesn't look like it's going away is what I'm trying to get at. Right. And well, all of if the If you're research... waiting for the market to crash, I, I, I'll just say it, I, I think you could be waiting a long time or waiting for never happen. I mean, if there's you're... always going to be a pullback, right? That's going to happen. But a market crash doesn't look like it's in the cards anytime soon. Right. We look at a lot of indicators, right? And, and, and the thing came up yesterday, someone asked the question about all of the homes in forbearance. And oh, yes, that one. There's yeah, that one, too. There's yeah. that one, too. That whole question of all of a sudden uh, forbearance ends. Are we going to have a ton of houses come on the market distressed? And our answer is no. no. In fact, the, the latest stats that came out this week on the whole forbearance and forbearance plans, uh, down below 2 million. It was almost 7 million at one point. Now it's down to 2 million, probably going to have a lot more drop off because there's a bunch of them that expiration that expire in the next few months. And so either those people will, um, you know, go into loss mitigation, meaning they'll go into some sort of, um, you know, foreclosure some- or maybe you do some sort of workout with, with the bank or they'll just pick up and start making their payments or they'll refinance or they'll sell. It just looks like most of those people that, uh, got into those forbearance plans um, are going to be able to come out of them. Um, they have options without so much difficulty. Yeah. If you're a listener and you're in a forbearance plan, you know, and you have questions about it, give us a ring. Tigo or I would be happy to talk mm-hmm. to you. You know, call the four four eight 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 number and just say you want to talk to us about it, because most people that are in forbearance, their house value has gone up over the last two years. Guess what? I got a stat for that. And, you know, <laughs> if if you're not going to be able to pay for your mortgage, you know, you probably have equity that we R- could really help good you chance. with. And, yeah. and yeah. you know, there's a lot of options, too. One of them, just real quickly, is it, it might be that an investor could buy your house and you could rent from them and not even move and have some cash in your pocket from selling your house. Yeah. And we're seeing that happen. In New Mexico, in the last year, on average, uh, homeowners gained twenty six thousand dollars in equity. Where else can you get that, right? I know you don't know. get it by putting it in the bank. I know, and and so anyway, that's that that was just you know one thing to, to bring up. Yeah. Um. So, let's see. What I, I want to get back to this Atlantic story, real if, if we may. So, the Atlantic did a story, and the headline was. BlackRock is not ruining in the U.S. housing market. Um, and I know a lot of people, you hear the word BlackRock and it's like trigger, right? I understand. We, we know big, big, mean, awful corporation. I, 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 I understand what they do. And if you don't understand what they do, just Google it and you'll, you'll get lots of hate. No, no, not you, but you'll get lots of hate toward them. Um, they're, they're a big venture capital company uh, fund that in certain parts of the country, they are buying literally thousands of homes to rent. And so in some parts of the country, people are worried that, not worried, but it's actually, they're getting, you know, people that want to actually buy and live in a home are getting outbid by these these investor cash buyers, right? Right. And so that makes people uncomfortable. The Atlantic story, though, was was pointing out that, you know, yes, that's happening. And and I do have to say, that's not happening here in Albuquerque. Yet. Yet. Right. You know, there, there's, I mean, you know, there buy, are some buyers there, coming in, but there's a few, you know, buy to rent where they just buy it and turn around and rent it. I, I get that. But at least it's still providing housing to our local community. Um, but there's a lot of other issues that this story gets into. And, and one of them is the local planning and zoning. This particular author, Derek, what was his name? Derek Thompson. Um, you know, his his take was that the local planning and zoning uh, departments have a lot to of blame in the fact that we've underbuilt by so much, like we just talked about in the last 10 years, making it very difficult for, for builders, developers. And then there's the NIMBYism thing, right, where, you know, nobody wants... NIMBY. You know, NIMBY. NIMBY is. Not in my backyard. 
And yeah. so, you know, that that's a challenge. And, and Where you get a neighborhood just opposed to the development yeah. going in next yeah. door, right? And the neighbors say no. And I want to make it clear here, I'm not giving an opinion. You're not giving an opinion. We're just telling you what's being talked about out there. And that there is, you know, there's there's true concern that we just haven't built enough houses in this country and it's finally hitting some of the mainstream media outlets like the atlantic like cnn like fox news fight you know all the all the bigger mainstream news outlets are starting to say oh we have a housing problem oh my gosh how long ago, Tracy, were you and I talking about we're, we haven't built enough homes in the last 10 years? We've been talking about it way before it hit the news now. So now it's hit the MSM and they're starting to realize it's like, oh, shoot, we have lots of problems out there. Mm -hmm. um, and and there doesn't, you know, and, and and of course, some people are calling for huge government intervention. And, you know, again, I don't want to go down that road. I'm just reporting what what people are saying. So it's uh, it's an interesting thing going on in the housing market or at least the housing conversation right now and 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 that we do have a we really do have a problem so what's one of the things that you know strikes me about this story and i feel like we're lucky that they're not we're not having huge numbers of our houses being bought by like an investment firm like that right um, and i would say it's, if you're thinking of buying a house don't wait you know, we talk about, yes, it's hard right now. You're going to be competing. You might mm -hmm. have to try on three or four houses before your offer is accepted on a home. Yeah. But lock in that house before these companies show up in Albuquerque. Start buying all the houses that are on the market. And then what we're seeing and part of the story, I believe, is, you know, they're not like you and I leasing a house to somebody and having some compassion here and there, right? It's This is a a major big company and when they come in and what the story says is a lot of times the rents go up yeah right they now have the majority of the rentals and they raise the rent yeah and yeah. it's it's not a it's it's a, a books thing it's you pay or you get out of the house well they're right? they're a public company and their you know their job is to make a profit right, right. and 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 it's and it's the, this, the story is really good from the standpoint of, you know, big, evil, faceless corporation, you know, driving up home prices. And it's... Well, driving uh, up rents, too. And driving up rents. And, yeah, that's, that's, that is really uncomfortable. Yeah. And really I, uncomfortable. I just like saying it's even a better time to buy because we don't have that happening here yet. But when you look at how affordable homes are here versus other parts of the country, it's only a matter of time, right? Yeah. Before all of those home buying companies are here. We know some of them are starting to dip their feet into We've our seen market. A few. We've yep. seen a few. So it's... You know, they're going to go, yep, we're going there next. And all of a sudden, all of our buyers are going to be competing against cash corporations yeah. that are paying cash. And, and I'd say lock in that house. If you have a child, a, a family member, somebody that should be buying, get them to buy sooner than later because the the market might only get tighter. We, we feel really strong about that. I'm sure there's plenty of you out there going, stop. What do you mean? You can't buy now. The market's going to crash. I get that. You, you're totally entitled to, to to what you're you know you think is is going on, but I tell you what, from feet on the ground, Tracy, this this market and all the stuff we're looking at, everything that's going on um, in New Mexico and around the country, it just doesn't look like we're suddenly going to have a whole bunch of homes on the market, and then a, or and or a whole bunch of buyers saying, you know what, never mind, I don't want to buy a home. Well, and you think about if you're planning to own a home for, you know, a number of years, mm -hmm. buying now, even if the prices went down a year from now or two years from now slightly, and then yep. they, they're going to go back up again. And you're saving, you're, you're paying for living somewhere anyway. Right. You know, if you looked at a chart, I'm sure if you put together how much you're paying and how much you're taking off your mortgage versus paying rent and how much you've saved in the bank, you're still going to be ahead by buying a house right now, even though we still believe that prices are going to keep going up for another year or two. Right? So far, I don't see anything changing. Again, you know, who knows? Yeah. You know, there. You know, there's a, there's always that, the black swan event. All of a sudden, the Fed could decide to raise prime rates, which would raise, 
you know, mortgage rates. If we got mortgage rates up over 4%, I could see things slowing down a little bit. But again, we're in such a huge inventory deficit. I don't, anyway, okay. So We've what else are we talking about? Yeah, no, let's no. talk about some homes. Well, let's, uh, I want to talk about the luxury market. If we, We've got a few minutes, but um, the, the only reason I bring this up is KRQE did a story, uh, News 13, and, I, and you know, I, I've decided now that I it's my job to correct every real estate news story locally that's incorrect. So um, they put out a story just talking about the crazy market like that we've been talking about. And they, 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 they had one quote in there that kind of implied that the higher end, the luxury market, the higher price homes, that it's, oh, it's kind of slow, there's not, you know, just the way it was framed, it made it sound like the higher end market is kind of slow. Tracy, you want to run through some of these stats oh on gosh. the high-end high end market? So you actually luxury raised market. the yeah. luxury r- price when you did these stats to 600000 yes. and above. So yeah. homes 600000 and above. Every time we've ever talked about luxury in our market, and we've talked on the radio a lot, it's we've used 500000 and to above. used to be four hundred ten years ago. Right. So Or less than 10 years ago. So we're talking about 600000 and above. The median days on market in June for luxury homes was four. What does that mean? That means 50% of the homes sold in four, in days. four days. Basically immediately. It, yeah. That's immediately. Closed luxury sales up 93% in the last 12 months versus the previous 12 months. Mm-hmm. 93%. That's huge. Number of luxury homes for sale is down 37% in the last 12 months, so less on the market. Supply-demand ratio, if you do the month supply of inventory, it's at uh, just over one month, and again, five to six months is a balanced market. And so the stats that I'm talking about are numbers that you pulled directly out of our multiple listing service. You did the analysis. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you yeah. had to post it on yes. that story. Yes. So number of luxury homes for sale is down 37%. Average closed price for luxury homes was 99.5% of the list price in June. Mm-hmm. So they're getting basically full price what they put out there, yep. right? Some yep. are obviously above, some are obviously yeah, I mean, I've, you know, you, you're always going to see the home that was listed for 1.3 million and sold for a million, right? I mean, there's those are out there. Right. And the other thing that you do, and you, this is so cool, you do the showings per listing, which is like the foot traffic yeah. in the homes. Yeah. And you do that by by looking at lockbox activity, Correct. which I don't, I'd never heard anybody doing that, but of course you figured out a well, way. Well, it's not lockbox; it's actually the the, the showing, showing software so that, that that tracks you know how many showings are scheduled. And so, yes, I've been yeah. watching that one because it's a really good indicator. Foot traffic is you know if you think about the the life cycle or the the the, the process, right? You know, people look, go out and look. Right, they start online, then they go out to the houses and look at them in person, then they go pending, then they go, you know, whatever, and close. But I mean, if, if, if foot traffic were to drop off dramatically, then we know that demand is starting to wane a little bit. Right, but right now, foot traffic, showings per listing is up 68% over the past year. Yeah, it, for the higher end. Again, we're talking luxury, luxury over 600,000, yep. So the thing that the last bullet point here that you've got is supply versus demand ratio for luxury homes is lower than ever, even 2006 at 1.1 month supply. So when we used to meet with a home seller with a luxury home and we'd talk about putting it on the market, we'd say, you know, marketing time might be six months to a year. You'll be on the market. Yep. That was fairly normal. We're talking now that 1.1 month. Yep. Right. Yeah. So quite a change. Tracy, you want to hit on a couple homes? Uh, that, that it's so hard to talk about homes right now, Eddie, because as soon as we talk about them, they're either already sold or, you know, they're going to be sold. So and well, I think we're speaking more to the sellers than we are the buyers. This yeah. is an opportunity yeah. to let you know what you can get. Like literally this time next week, if you pick up the phone right now, you call Tigo and Tracy, you go, 505-448-8888. Somebody nice will be on the other side of the line. Say, hey, you know what? Well, let's visit uh, about your home. Uh, we'll do a market analysis. We'll think about how to merchandise it. We'll do a walkthrough. We'll do our, our great thing. And then basically they'll price it exactly where it needs to be. They've they've talked about how everything else, what 50% of all the homes sold within three days that's from yep. listing, uh, 75% roughly from seven days. Uh, Tigo and Tracy will practically guarantee that. And then basically all you do is you just make sure that uh, they get through your home. We hit the market. And this time next week, 
your home could be under contract. It could actually go that fast. But uh, Tigo, Tracy, it's a it's a remarkable market to, to be is. sure. But why don't we just talk about a couple of quick homes uh, that are out there on the market that will be sold by uh, the time, uh, I don't know, Monday morning. So they'll be under contract. So what I'd rather do is just talk about, we have a lot of homes in our pipeline that are gonna be on the market next week. We've got some open houses. We've got okay. midweek open houses this coming week. We have them next weekend. So the best thing is get on our website, see the coming soon, see the properties that are coming, get on open houses um, website, welcomehomeabq.com, it's all there. And then let us know what you're interested in and let's get you in to see it right away. But if you wanna sell, give us a ring, like Eddie said, it's never been a better time. Never been a better time and until uh, next week. Like, even though, as much as I might know, I never know enough as the real estate experts, so, and they can take you through the process. 505 448 8888. That's 505 448 8888 or welcomehomeabq.com. That's welcomehomeabq.com. Stay tuned.